Hello friends, I am Siege Plays, and we are diving into a new Let's Play series. This time around we're doing another city builder, it's one of my favorites. Uh, Banished is one that I have logged many many hours in. It is fairly simple, but it is one that has decent replay value. Uh, I think the goal of this time around is something that I have never done in the game before, which is reach a population of 1,000 citizens. It's going to be tough. Uh, the first couple hundred are usually fairly easy. But then once you get up above, you know, three, four hundred, you start having some balance issues with food and whatnot, supplies. Um, and then the deaths start coming pretty fast and it gets a little bit difficult to balance. So we're going to see what we can do here. Um, first and foremost, though, I did want to apologize for the long break between videos. I not only took a nice long trip this summer wherein I did an archaeological archaeological dig, woo, uh, an archaeological dig, which was really, really cool. Um, but also I took a little bit of a mental health break for a little while, but I am back and I'm hoping to be back on the daily grind here. Uh, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. Starting off strong with a picture of what can happen if there's a fire in your town. <laughs> I don't like that the waiting screen uh, has no music going though. It's kind of strange. Okay, so I might actually turn the music down just a little bit more. It's kind of loud. Take it down to like 12. Okay, uh, first and foremost, I always like to get my display set up. So I usually like to do these four. Uh, put the map up here. Interestingly enough, this looks just like a map I've played on before, um, like a seed that I've used before. So sometimes I kind of start and restart just to get a seed that I like, but I think this time around we're just going to stick with what we've got and make the most of it. Um, so first and foremost, I want to look for a good place to set up our humble beginnings. We have a nice flat area here which will be good for farming eventually. Uh, I want to get our first few buildings placed down. I'm just trying to decide where would be the best place to put some of them. Uh, okay, so first and foremost, gatherers are one of the very best ways to get food early on, and even in the later game too. I'm just trying to figure out where the best place to put this would be. It looks like this area is mostly forested, and actually, this area over here is not not a bad place to kind of start our towns. It's just a little bit farther away than I would like it to be. Um, but you know what? Let's start up here. And then we can move our way down to like a main city area. Uh, so let's go ahead and put down a gatherer's hut somewhere that makes some sense. Like right there. I don't usually like to build roads this early on because it distracts them, but I want to know where things are. So we're just going to put a little short one there. So we've got that. We will need a barn to store stuff, to store our food mostly. Uh, we're going to put it on this side here because we will set up some fishing over here. Uh, what else do we need? What else? We will need hunters eventually. We will need an herbalist eventually. We do need a forester's lodge around here at some point as well. So we'll just go ahead and lay that out. Now, I don't usually like to blueprint a whole lot ahead of time, but you'll notice I say that and then I don't listen to that. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I try and let things develop organically, but for this part especially, it's important to have things kind of laid out early on. Um... So that way you can kind of progress quickly. Let's put our fishing dock there. Close enough to our barn that it makes sense. Uh, we're not going to place a market just yet. So we have two sources of food, a source of storage. We will need houses. We also need a... We need a stockpile for the storage of the wood and whatnot. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that like right here. That's good enough for now. And then we also need a woodcutter. That's going to be very important for the winter. We're going to put that closer to where I think our houses are probably going to be. 
which we will not start building just yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and put about four of these people on building. And we will go ahead and start marking some resources that we need to chop down for uh, these buildings. I'm not going to do iron just yet. I will do wood and stone because those are the ones that we're going to need right away. I don't want to mark too much because it'll distract them, but we will need all of that. And then for the moment, just because, just because, uh, I am going to put down a stockpile over here. And I hope those trees aren't in the way. I'm actually going to make it the same size as the woodcutter, approximately. Perfect. That way we can just not have to worry about them having to build one. It's just one that we can use already. Uh, so, we have four laborers, four builders. Somebody's going to grow up very soon. Let's go ahead and unpause. I'm going to run this on probably five times speed for now. Oh, that, that feels really, really loud. Uh, effect volume. Let's take this down to 50. We'll take ambient volume down to 50 as well. Hopefully that's not too quiet, but it just feels really, really loud. All right, sorry about that, friends. I just feel like my sound is very, very loud right now. Uh, I'm just working on some balance here. Uh, so, yeah, let's get ourselves... Oh, they built that really fast. I guess I didn't need to, but it'll be fine. Uh, so I need to get some things marked for building. First and foremost, gatherer's hut. That's going to be our primary source of food. And the barn. Actually, the barn can wait because we have this cart here. Actually, it's very full, so let's just go ahead and... Mark that as well. I think we're just going to go ahead and put most of our people into... Actually, we're just going to put them all into builders because anybody extra will go and pick up things anyway. So they are already working very quickly here. Yeah, yeah, the reserve of stone is low. So one thing... I really like to do sometimes is pay attention to the names that come up in the event log because they basically just kind of mix already established names. I think it's very funny sometimes. Uh, okay, yeah, so this portion of road has already been built. We will go ahead and just continue it down to our stockpile there. Gatherers Hut will be done very shortly. Now, we'll pause for a minute. Um, not pause the game, but I mean... Pause, can, uh, pause the labor here at the gatherer's hut because we have enough food to get us through for the moment. So I just want to build as much as we can. I want to get that going. And I also, well, I don't want to over, overwork these guys. The woodcutter is going to be very important. I'll chop all of that down. And the forester is also going to be very important early on. For that uh, supply of firewood. Now I started on hard, which means that you basically just get this cart with some supplies in it to get you started. You can start it with, you know, already established town center essentially. I didn't want to do that. I like doing it this way. Feels a little bit more authentic. And it takes some planning. Uh, let's go ahead and build a forester. And then I think I will put two people on gathering for now, just to get our food started. The nice thing about the gatherer is it gives you a, a bunch of different kinds of food. It gives you nuts, it gives you berries, uh, it gives you onions, I believe. And so you get a little mixture of, you know, some protein, some veggies, some fruits. We have the woodcutter. They are now building this. So let's go ahead and start building a few of our homes. And really, I just want to get enough down so that people have somewhere to go in the in the cold, you know? So let's go ahead and put down one there, one there. And you want it to be close enough to your work sources here. Uh, so I'm just going to leave all of this running as is for the moment. I will put roads around these houses here. Taking a look at the map really quickly, uh, it does look like we have a pretty decent start, actually. Plenty of area for development. 
plenty of area for farming and whatnot. One thing I appreciate about this game a little bit uh, that Dawn of Man kind of misses the mark on a little bit is the terrain. Because in Dawn of Man, if you watch through my Dawn of Man playthrough, there are so many hills and mountains. And that is kind of representative of certain areas for sure, but there are plenty of areas in the world that are not that mountainous. And even if you choose the less mountainous terrain in that game, it's always going to be very mountainous regardless. This one at least you can choose. This is valleys. And it gives you, you know, you have some hills here and there, you have some lumps and bumps, but it's not quite as crazy as Dawn of Man is. I love Dawn of Man, don't get me wrong. Um, but it doesn't give you a lot of options as far as places to settle. Now, another thing you'll notice about me and how I play this game differently than some other YouTubers do is that I am not shy when it comes to building mines and quarries. I build a lot of them, usually. Uh, a, it helps you in having more balanced resources around the map. That way you don't have to move things from one end of the map to the other. But also, eventually, you will run out of surface stone and surface iron to gather. And I don't really care so much that, you know, you can't remove them. Mines especially, because they're kind of out of the way. Um, but, you know, it's, it's realistic. Okay, so it's late summer now. We will get one person on firewood here. Where is that woodcutter? We want to make sure that we have enough to get us through the winter here, and you're going to notice that's going to drop very quickly as we build houses, so. Looks like people are still gathering lots of stone. I will mark a few more trees for the time being since we don't really have any foresters. I'd mark those there. And at some point, once we've kind of gotten ourselves established, I will empty this cart and remove it as well. Oh, mushrooms. I forgot about mushrooms. Good old mushrooms. Alright, we have two laborers now. Two kind of spare ones. I want to put one on forestry because what they'll do is they'll start removing these resources automatically. So I don't necessarily have to assign anybody to do that. The foresters will remove that in order to plant trees. Uh, so I'm actually going to put two people on forestry because that's going to be tough. We actually have a really good store of stone right now. Kind of difficult early game. And that's another thing. The reason I put mines... I mean, you can trade for stuff. You can hope that it's going to come in when you need it. But I like to have my own you know, stockpiles of iron and stone because you're going to need to be making tools. You're going to need to be building cemeteries and churches and whatnot, those all take a lot of stone. And eventually you want to build stone homes, you want to upgrade your roads, uh, so it's important to have a good supply of stone coming in. Now, that said, putting them to work in the quarries is actually a roll of the dice, because they, I mean, they can die on just about any job, but they can especially die in the mines, in the quarries, and forestry. Um, so just have to know that you might lose people a little bit more quickly than you normally would have. But having that steady income of stone is actually really good. Okay, so we are good on homes now. Everybody's got a home. Um, we will need to eventually build a hunter's lodge. Okay, so let's take our number of builders down to two for now. Um... We have two foresters, one woodcutter, two gatherers. We're doing okay on everything so far, so let's go ahead and get this built. And we will just continue this road on out. Uh, let's also just go ahead and... Let's get the, the forestry up and going here, because that's going to be really important. We're going to need a lot of wood here. Cool, so it's a nice little a nice little start. I think we can probably go ahead and move all of that stuff. But I'm just gonna hold off. Doesn't really make sense to move it too much. Eventually I think I will put a market down kinda like right in this area because that will allow me to also build some homes over here to get another maybe gatherer and hunter and you know fishers and all that stuff. You do not start off in hard mode. You do not start off with any crops at all. No livestock. But you kind of have to jump into those eventually with trade, which we're going to use firewood early on. A pretty cheap and easy resource. 
You have to be careful balancing that, though, because they'll always have to restock the trader, and they'll take from your stores. But it is nice as additional storage. I think once we get our, like, forestry and whatnot set up down here, we'll probably put our trading post, like, right in this area. Let's see, if I was to put a market... Those are probably the furthest up that direction. I want to build those homes, so we could put the market pretty far down, actually. Probably, like, right about there. And that will give me a pretty, pretty decent area. We're doing okay on food. We're doing great on firewood. It's our limit. 200, that's fine for now. We will up that eventually. We'll get that going, and then... We will need to also build at some point, as you can tell, we are already very low on tools and clothing. So we will need to build a blacksmith and a uh, tailor fairly soon. And for that, we'll need iron. So yeah, while we're stable on all that stuff, I'm going to let them continue doing their thing. I'm going to go ahead and put down a few more buildings here. Go ahead and put our hunters down. Hunting is interesting because it's fairly good early on, but the bigger your city gets, the less you're going to really find them able to hunt because animals do come into town occasionally, but not all that often. They tend to avoid centers of population as they do in real life. Um, so we will go ahead and put this away from where we're going to put our homes. Put that there, and then let's go ahead, since we know that our market's going to be probably down here somewhere. Let's go ahead and just extend this road out. I will probably try and put a mine somewhere in here, so we want our blacksmith to be fairly close. Um, blacksmith. Tools are going to be very important. They make your workers work faster and more efficiently. Um, so let's go ahead and put that... Let's see. Where would a mine go if I was going to put it? Oh, so we could put it right on the path. That's awesome. Could we put two down over here? Like this little mining town? Yeah, okay. So, the furthest in, and I'm only going to do this just so we can get an idea of where we want to place our blacksmith. We'll put that there. And then we will put the blacksmith basically right on the other side of that. A little ways away from where our town is right now, but it will be worth it to be there in the long run. I can go ahead and remove that now. Wait, no. That's the only time you can remove that building, by the way. Once it's built, that's it. So we have that down, and we will also put down a tailor. And we'll leave a space in between. I tend to sometimes be really... Um, intricate with how I place the buildings, trying to match them all up, but the, the more I play this game, I think the more I'm just kind of like, the city's going to look how it's going to look. Um, and then what was the other thing? Oh yeah, an herbalist. We will want one of them. They will be very important. But they generally only produce, I mean they don't only, but they generally produce a lot more in old growth forests, so we might, we might actually put them over here and just build a bridge. It's a little ways away from everything, but it will be an important source, so let's we'll just go ahead and place it for now. And see if we can get a bridge going across here. We can. Cool. So that's a later on project here. We have reached our limit on firewood, that's fine. Um our hunter is being built. think tools are going to be more important at the moment, so let's get that going as well. I am... Oh, we are running really low on food. Let's go ahead and put our two remaining people in fishing, and we'll take it down to one builder and do three gatherers. I think that's largely just because we emptied our stores into the homes, but running out of food is not a good option. Yeah, I see plenty of opportunity on this map for growth. I almost always choose the large maps anyway. It gives you better options. I once tried to start a town, so, you know, our start was over here somewhere. 
I once tried to start a town that was like over here, not on this map obviously, but that distance, and that was that was a mistake. We had to keep running back and forth to the cart to get stuff, and then winter came and that was it. They became the army of the dead. Okay, yep. Keep going up. Up, up, up. So we're working on this one. We will need iron for our blacksmith. Not only to make the tools, but also the building itself needs iron. So once the hunter's cabin is done... You know what, actually, because we do technically have a laborer, I'm gonna just go ahead and mark some iron. So let's go ahead and grab that. And that. And I won't mark anymore at the moment. I don't generally tend to place mines and quarries this early just because there's so much abundant iron and stone on the surface, but we'll probably put like two mines here and then maybe like a quarry over here. It just depends. I think once we expand our housing a little bit, we'll probably put our market down. Those are nice and helpful. And people don't have to go all the way across the map for resources. Okay, looks like we've turned our food around. Our firewood's doing fine. We are out of tools. This is why we needed to, uh... Needed to build that blacksmith. We'll start to see that little notification pop up any day now. We have an extra laborer, so we'll put them on building. Yeah, stone goes so fast. I'm not going to put anybody on hunting just yet. Not really necessary. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned the way that you get livestock and uh, produce, vegetables, etc., is trading posts. You have to trade for the seeds. They're actually very expensive. Um, but generally I find that firewood is a decent enough resource to produce and trade. So it makes it fairly easy. Eventually tools and clothing and whatnot will be really helpful. Ale will be good. Um, textiles is a good one to trade. And there we go. First person has run out of tools, but the good news is we have the blacksmith. They already have all of their supplies. I've had games where my entire population ran out of tools, and it took a little while to get get them get them all uh, equipped again. But this time around, I'm hoping that we'll only get to like four people missing tools. Yeah, they'll have this built pretty quickly. We will put another stockpile over here, most likely, for the uh, mines when we get those. Awesome. So, boom, boom. They'll start producing right away. I will have our builder remove this. Not really all that much in it anyway. Now, these tend to take a long time for them to actually remove. Now that I've said that, they'll probably do it very quickly, but... I'm going to let the builder do that. Next step will be more housing. One of the cool things about this game, though, is uh, you can actually track the paths that your citizens take. This shows you, if you click on their homes, it shows what jobs they have. And if you click on the job, it shows where their homes are. So it lets you know if you need more housing in a certain area, because sometimes their pathing will take them all the way across the map. That is not efficient and in the winter and whatnot can be deadly. So, so far we've only had one person, I don't know if it's the same person, but one person who doesn't have tools. And it looks like we have plenty of tools, so they just need to go and pick them up. And instead they're going to get more iron, it looks like. Hmm. All right, let's go ahead and get the tailor going as well. Clothing will be important. 
can see all these nice new trees being planted over here. And this shows you how much of these resources they've removed. Yeah, we will need to put some housing down soon. You always want to maintain a decent balance of adults, students, and children. We won't have students until we get a school built. It basically means they won't enter the workforce until later, but they'll be better at their jobs. So it's not at all necessary, but it's definitely very helpful. Um, good, our food is slowly going up. We already have all of the resources for that. Nice. This has not been touched. You can also set things to higher priority, but this is not not really a high priority at the moment. Oh, maybe that's why they weren't picking up the tools. They were probably stored in there. Alright. We definitely have a decent supply of tools. We will keep that limit. Uh, honestly, we're going to put that down to 25 because our population's too low to be set at 50 right now. And we're not trading them, so... Once this is done, we'll probably build like two more houses. Almost there. Come on, guys. Our earliest source of, of uh, clothing will be from the hunter. They'll pick up leather and venison. And that will be our source of leather. But that is actually, when it comes to leather, for venison, it's a, it's a great source. You'll notice that you'll have an abundance of that. Um, but leather is actually harder to come by until you get um, cattle. Cattle will be your best way of getting leather. But by the time you get livestock, you're going to want leather and wool. Wool is a very abundant resource. For at least a while. As long as you have enough sheep farms, it is very plentiful. And the animals don't have to die for that, so that's a good thing too. And wool is actually a pretty pretty decent trading resource if you have enough of it to spare. It's a, it's a pretty good one. Things like herbs you'll find are just really bad to trade. They're not generally worth a whole lot, and they also, a lot of traders will not take them. Uh, okay, so now that we have that building done, we can build two more homes that people can have bebes. Those going. That's actually probably one of the more normal names I've ever seen on this game. Roderick. Arthony. And I'm going to keep our wood cutting limit fairly low just because we want to store up some wood here. Uh, we will set our limit on wood up to 500 for now. Pretty easy one to run out of. Fishing is going okay. We are at our limit on tools. Good. Start to store up this iron here. It means we probably have at least two laborers right now. Um, so that said, go ahead and collect some stone because we're definitely going to need it. I won't mark uh, too much more up there because that's where the... You know what? This always annoys me, so I'm just going to do it. I'm going to mark this high priority. Now it should get removed pretty quickly. I'll do this before the homes now, just because I marked it as priority. How did we gain... How did we gain clothing? Or did we just not run out? Strange. Oh, you know what? It must have been stored on the cart. That's what it was. Yeah, we need to get some more people in the uh, workforce here.
I might bump this up to 300 for now, just to get us started. We are in the dead of winter year two. Yeah, I definitely want to put our center right around here. And that's where we'll put our church and our hospital and our town hall. All that good stuff. As far as disaster preparedness, right now we have nothing. Uh, it is important. It took me a long time to understand the importance of these, but boarding homes are very important because they can hold a lot of people. And if you have a disaster strike like a tornado or a fire, um, those will be places where people will be able to go and live while you rebuild everything. Um, wells will also be important. This is one game where putting out fires is very difficult. And good luck trying to keep it from spreading too far. Which is why you eventually want to build stone homes. They're obviously less likely to catch fire. But you also want to build lots of wells, and the problem with that is they're expensive. Uh, but with that said, my timer did go off, so I think I'm going to go ahead and call this one here. Um, thank you guys for joining me for another Let's Play. I'm excited to see how this one goes, and uh, let me know if you like it. Uh, also, new is the Discord for the channel. You can find it in the description below. Um, it is very recent, and it'll be a good way to keep in touch with those of you following the channel. Um, you can let me know kind of what you want to see more of, or just chit-chat if you want. Uh, so with that said, thank you guys yet again for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.